Dear learners, greetings from IIT Kawati. We are in the MOOCs course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion. Till this point of time, we have completed all the lectures for this course. Now, in another subsequent lectures, I will be explaining some learning components or some important points that we have learnt so far from this course. At the same time, we will try to solve some numerical problems which will be useful for building the concept of this course and also it will add towards the benefit of the final examinations. So, if I divide this course in two parts, one is thermodynamics parts which is being advanced version, other component for this course is combustions. So, in today's lectures, I will be focusing on mainly the learning modules from the topic advanced thermodynamics. So, let us understand that what are the topics what we have learnt so far in this course. So, in the first module we had discussed the review of basic thermodynamics, second module was focused mainly on entropy and exergy, third module was based on thermodynamic property relations and in fact, this particular module is highly mathematical in nature because it requires the knowledge of partial differential equations to derive the thermodynamic equations. In the fourth module, we have properties of gas mixture. So, these four parts basically constitutes mainly the advanced thermodynamics part. Why I say advanced thermodynamics parts? Because we have seen this course already at UG level and the approach in which the concept of the course was completely different. Here we mainly focus on advanced topic that is mainly related towards the research purpose at the same time analysis of other important components mainly in the areas of entropy and exergy, which finds a great deal of applications with respect to IC engines mainly. Then there are certain situations which requires the knowledge of different gas models. So, mainly till this point of time we have focused on ideal gas models. So, the concept of different real gas models was also introduced this is the additional components which was added in this course. And the second part of this course that is from module V fifth to module 8 that is mainly dealt with the combustion. Combustion is one of the important fundamental topics which is used in our day to day life, but unfortunately the basic course of combustion is normally absent in most of the syllabus. So, with this viewpoint, uh, in this particular course, we have added the basics of combustion and mainly which is inclined for the thermodynamic parts of the combustion. So, we start with combustion and thermochemistry, then during this combustion reactions, we study its chemical kinetics. Then, in the next module, we studied the thermodynamics of reactive systems because the combustion is nothing but the fuel and air when they burn it gives rise to combustion products. So, when this reaction takes place in which direction the reaction should proceed, what is the thermodynamic relations that for which the reaction should proceed which is mainly dealt with the knowledge of entropy calculations. So, this is all about the thermodynamic parts. And the last module that is module 8, we discussed about the combustion on flames. In fact, this is one of the practical applications where we dealt with different types of combustions. So, we have laminar flame propagations, we have diffusion flame, we have droplet burning, we have droplet evaporation, all these concepts were taught in the last module. So, this is all about the overview of this course. In fact, this overview I have already given in the beginning of the course and at the end of this course, I am just trying to 
the collect all the information and try to see what are the different learning components in each modules. Now, to segregate module wise when you talk about the review of basic thermodynamics there we learnt about hydrostatic systems mainly it is a compressible systems and where we also studied the pure substance homogeneous mixtures heterogeneous mixtures. Then moving to the thermodynamic systems where we all know the system surroundings environment universe all this concept was taught at the same time we also know the closed systems open system then we have property of the systems all these things are discussed. Then moving towards the laws of thermodynamics the first law that we are introduced is the zeroth law of thermodynamics and in fact it talks about the concept of thermal equilibrium. Then we introduced uh, two types of wall, wall although it states a wall but physically it is not an wall it is like a word that is used in the thermodynamic viewpoint that talks about how the information of work and heat trans heat that is being propagated in a medium. So, if you say adiabatic wall the complete closure of heat transfer is ensured that means no information of energy due to heat cannot be propagated. But if you say diathermic wall complete information of work and heat can be possible through a diathermic wall. So, this is nothing but the conceptual viewpoint. Then we introduced the quasi static process work transfer, then we introduced internal energy function. Now, while talking about uh, internal energy functions, we also come across the first law of thermodynamics. So, the first law of thermodynamics nothing but the equalization of work transfer with internal energy function with additional heat transfer, but the question is that why that heat transfer has to come. So, there we uh, say, so basically during an energy interaction process if uh, the total energy transfer due to work and due to heat if they are not equal then it is closely related with the internal energy functions or close related I mean uh, the energy transfer total energy transfer due to for work and heat they are equalized through this internal energy functions. This is nothing but the first law of thermodynamics. Now, talking about heat transfers the energy mode energy transfer due to heat if it has to happen then the it has to be done through temperature difference. Now, with the viewpoint of work and energy transfer I would like to emphasize that most of the work transfer we say it during a quasi static process it is regarded as integral of PDV. Now, if the work transfer is not possible and if it has to be any other energy transfer due to work if it is not possible then it can be regarded as heat transfer and heat transfer mainly occurs due to the temperature difference. So, looking at the mode of heat transfer or transfer of energy through heat uh, we have uh, modes like convection, conduction and radiations. So, these are the different modes of heat transfer that accounts for the energy balance while formulating the first law of thermodynamics. Then we move to the complete conversion of heat to work or conversion of heat to work and vice versa. Now, while talking about the first law of thermodynamics we emphasize that heat and work although they have different mode of energy transfer, but there is no difference in terms of quantifications. For example, unit of heat and work they are same. So, in other words first law does not differentiate the energy as heat or work. So, thereafter the second law of thermodynamics comes into pictures which talks about the spontaneous process of energy transfer. Now, in a spontaneous process is possible only when a system can be regarded or system can follow in a certain directions. So, directionality of a pro system is introduced through the second law of thermodynamics. So, here two points that needs to be emphasized first thing it emphasizes that work is a high grade energy 
for which complete conversion of, of work to any other mode is possible and heat is a low grade energy in which complete conversion of heat is not possible. Now, if we want to find the convert heat to work mode that means, from low grade energy we have to convert to high grade energy then we must deject some of the heat to the surroundings and thereby we can transfer only certain quantities or certain percentage of this heat into work and this process will be ensured through a Carnot cycle which is a hypothetical theoretical cycle. Then based on that some workable models for second law of thermodynamics comes into picture which talks about uh, concept of heat engines and refrigerators which is uh, so heat engines are like work producing devices whereas refrigerators and air conditioning systems they are work consuming devices. Now based on this concept we derived uh, at least the Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement was formulated. Another important aspect of the second law that it introduces the thermodynamic temperature scales. Normally prior to the second law when the temperature was measured it was measured either in a degree centigrade or degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit and this temperature measurement was mainly based on the fact that there is a working fluid which comes into picture based on the uh, limiting situation of this working fluid temperature was quantified. So, but uh, while talking about second law of thermodynamics it introduces a new temperature scale which is called Kelvin scale and this Kelvin scale is independent of the working fluid of the substance while measuring this temperature. Now, because of this reason the Kelvin scale is regarded as the most appropriate and universal scale in SI system. The next important aspect of this second law is the concept of reversible and irreversible process. So, second law emphasizes the fact the need of a spontaneous process that means a system can undergo in a particular direction, reverse direction is not possible. So, if a, a system can undergo in both the directions that means the path or traces that it makes while going from one state state point 1 to state point 2 if it follows this exactly same path then we call this as a reversible process and we say there is a reversibility is the very fundamental word that where it to define this its characteristics. But if the process is not irreversible then we call regard it as a irreversibility. There are many source of irreversibility, external irreversibility, internal irreversibility, then chemical irreversibility the which we have emphasized in our discussions. And in each of these cases we have given some examples like heat transfer from a reservoir, another can be expansion of the work done uh, during a free expansion process or a free expansion process is another uh, situ situations where we quantify the heat transfer as well as uh, work transfer and based on this we find the nature of irreversibility that uh, affects during the spontaneity of a given process. Then in the next module which is very important topics uh, as far as this module is concerned and in fact almost this lecture was for 2 weeks and almost we have covered all the important aspects of entropy and exergy. The concept of entropy was introduced as a part of second law and this concept was continued for two important situations one is for reversible part other is for irreversible part. Now to give a mathematical indications for this property we started with Clausius theorem with Clausius inequality equations. There we considered the reversible part of the Clausius equality and after doing so we define the term entropy. Then while looking at the irreversibility part then we framed the equation which is called as a entropy generation. And this entropy generation we say 
it is a measure of irreversibility in a medium. Then it is followed by entropy balance that means for a closed system and open systems we frame the equations for entropy balance. Then we uh, introduce the concept of principle of entropy increase. In fact, it talks about that entropy of universe always increases. Now, to give a thermodynamic viewpoint or estimate for practical applications, we define the process which is commonly known as isentropic process. Then introduce the terms like isentropic efficiencies for different steady flow components. In fact, part of this analysis was also covered at the UG level. There we have turbines, compressors, nozzles, heat exchangers, we can apply these equations. Now, with this uh, entropy formulations, we can correlate the information of heat through the second law. The other important part of in module 2 is exergy. Exergy is nothing but the maximum work that can be extracted from a given system. Now, to quantify to these things because in our all our previous discussions when you dealt with work or heat transfer, we never bring surrounding into picture. Now, whether the, the, a system in reality gives the best of its performance or not to account for this fact we define the term exergy and exergy is nothing but the maximum work that can be recovered during um, through a work producing device or minimum work that can be, be consumed um, for a work consuming device by while talking about while taking into consideration about the state of the environment. So, for that the exergy of all kinds of heat modes of heat transfer can be quantified, exergy of work transfer can be found out, exergy through kin of kinetic energy, uh, potential energy corresponding exergy term can be evaluated, exergy of heat transfer can also be evaluated. So, based on this we define the exergy of the system. Then the similar analogy was made for exergy balance. So, likewise we made the analysis of entropy balance, we also analyze the exergy balance for the closed system as well as uh, open systems. Now, while looking at this exergy, one important thing is that while we deal with energy and exergy, exergy always decreases, but energy is always conserved. So, based on this, this is the very fundamental difference between energy and exergy, but energy can be considered as work mode or heat mode, but exergy is always interpreted as a work mode because it is the maximum uh, work that can be extracted from a given system while considering surroundings into account. So, in a similar analogy of entropy of increase in the entropy principles, we also have the reverse expression that is decrease in the exergy principles. Uh, and this will add to another term which is called as a second law efficiency. Because the in the first law of during Carnot efficiency, it talks about uh, the efficiency of engines and in which we say that the work that is recoverable from heat. Now, but while talking about second law, the work that will be recovered while surrounded from a given systems uh, while by taking into consideration of the system surroundings which is at a dead state. So, second law efficiency was defined. Then the third module which is the thermodynamic property relations. So, prior to this we have talked about the pure substance and it is basically speaking that when you deal with the thermodynamic property relations, here we are trying to interpret the all the thermodynamic behavior or properties and try to find out the correlation among the properties. Because normally uh, thermodynamic systems are interpreted as a compressible medium uh, where temperature specific volume, entropy, density, uh, enthalpy, internal energy all these properties are defined. Then what is their relations be among these properties? To find this, this particular module was 
designed and where we define thermodynamic functions and in particular we derived this Maxwell's equations. There are four Maxwell equations and through these four Maxwell equations we derived about 16 thermodynamic relations and these relations are mathematical in nature, but they can be used as and when they are being recalled for a given practical applications. Now, while using these equations, we have applied these property relations mainly for two situations for a phase change process and for a single phase systems. Accordingly, equations also were derived. One more important applications for a phase change process is clausius clapeyron equations and in fact, it is a very widely used equations during a phase change process. And this equations helps us in designing the property diagrams of your substance. Then moving further, we derived the heat capacity equations involving Cp, Cv relations and these are actually general relations and subsequently these relations were simplified for an ideal gas. Then we have TDS equations that we all know there are two fundamental TDS equations that is based on first law and second law analysis. One of the practical applications of uh, these uh, thermodynamic property relations is towards the liquefaction of gases. Normally when you liquefy the gases, there are certain situations we require the gases has to be stored in a liquefaction conditions. For example, when the space shuttle goes to the higher altitudes, it carries the fuel as well as oxidizers and this fuel is typically is nothing but hydrogen and oxidizers also is nothing but the oxygen and but while taking these them in a gaseous mode, we require a very large size because the gases have very um, energy density for the gases is less. So, we require a large volume. So, for that reasons those fuels and oxidizers like hydrogen and oxygen they has to be liquefied and stored in a medium liquefied and stored. Now, the concept of liquefying the, the gases into liquids deals with the process which is known as throttling and during this throttling process the temperature and pressure during throttling process, the normally it is a throttling process, the throttling process is normally we decrease this pressure at the same time we have to see whether temperature increase or decrease. So, this quantifications was done through a parameter which is known as Joule's Thompson coefficient. So, in fact, it gives a graphical representations of pressure temperature curve which is known as for a given substance which is known as a inversion curve and this inversion curve is the basics for liquefaction of the gases and during this liquefaction we can get the highest yield when the joule thompson coefficient value is 0. That means, we have to follow the inversion curve for maximum yield during a liquefaction process. Then in the module 4 we move to properties of gas mixtures that means, whatever equations that were derived from the thermodynamic property relations that was carried forward um, to define for various applications. So, while talking about the gas mixtures, we can have ideal gas, we can have a real gas. So, one way to interpret this ideal and real gas is to find the equation of state. So, initially this equation of state was represented through varial uh, equation of states that involves the expansion relations uh, among pressure volume and temperatures. But later point of time we found the various real gas models that involves the van der Waals gas models, then Redlich Kong equation model and which are highly used for variety applications. But uh, apart from this we have ideal gas equation model which states that which gives a simple pressure volume and temperature relations through the gas constant or universal gas constant. Now, to analyze the gas mixtures there are okay, before you do that to quantify this real gas models 
in a graphical manner or to simplify this generalized uh, compressibility chart was introduced. So, where we found the parameters like reduced pressure, reduced uh, temperature, pseudo specific volume all these parameters were defined in a non dimensional form where all the pure substances they are brought into a common platform uh, which gives the generalized compressibility chart and it is nothing but the plot between the compressibility factor versus reduced pressure at various reduced temperatures. So, this will help us in finding the compressibility factor for a any kind of real gas uh, and this will give a indication that uh, the real, uh, the, uh, how far we deviate from this ideal gas model. Now, to analyze all these uh, gas mixtures, we define this uh, called as a multi component systems and this multi component system in general is that a gas uh, it can have a multiple number of gases or it can be um, the system may be at different phase liquid or gas phase or it may be mixture or it may be a solutions. So, various possible com combinations are um, can be done, but more details analysis are more inclined for uh, the chemical thermodynamics parts, but however, in this course we have given some basic concepts for a multi component systems by introducing the properties like partial molar properties, chemical potential, fugacity all these things were covered in this course. In addition to that for a multi component systems we define the rules of gas mixture that is K rules, additive pressure and additive volume rules and this gas mixtures uh, model can be simplified if we assume this gas to be an ideal gas. So, by considering mole and mass fractions we can find out the uh, expressions for Dalton's law of partial pressures and in fact, in reality this uh, the uh, approach or the uh, the assumption of ideal gas mixtures has uh, a tremendous advantage in simplifying the mathematical equations or expressions. Then we uh, for this ideal gas mixture we we also find out the how we can uh, find the global thermo uh, global thermodynamic est property estimation for a mixture. So, a mixture may have multiple number of components, but when these all these component and mix together how they behave if they behave as if they were in ideal gas then what would have been its um, combined internal energy combined specific um, heat combined um, enthalpy that has to be calculated through the individual share of each of these gases. Then uh, moving further for application side the mixing analysis was done for constant pressure and mixing analysis can also be interpreted with respect to constant compositions or, vari or variable compositions. Means, the composition of the mixture was known initially when it is done. Other situation is that two, uh, um, two gases they come from two separate entities and they mix together. So, there we call this as a mixture of variable compositions. Now, this mixing process can be analyzed uh, for a compression process, expansion process, adiabatic mixings. Okay. These are the things that we discussed in the module 4. So, in the next uh, section I will be discussing about the other modules, but uh, till this point of time up to module 4 whatever contents we have covered if I try to consolidate through some numerical approach or problem solving approach how I should do. So, from um, so, so in this backdrop uh, you, you, you can think of some question bank or some solutions or some problems that needs to be solved during the examinations and in the benefit of learners I am trying to explain some uh, favorable problems that can be attempted during the examinations. So, the first problem talks uh, about the entropy because this comes from the topic entropy which says that it is a very simple problem 
that when a unit mass of water for which specific heat is given uh, at 0 degree centigrade is brought to contact with a heat reservoir at 80 degree centigrade, then we need to find out the what is the change of the entropy of the universe. For these things, the to solve these problems, we have to recall this entropy equations first. But before you do that, if I draw this uh, th thermal diagram, now this reservoir, this reservoir is at 80 degree centigrade. So, I say T r is equal to 80 degree centigrade and this 80 degree centigrade it has to be converted to Kelvin that is 353 Kelvin. Now, it is in contact with water. So, obviously, and this water is at 0 degree centigrade that is 273 Kelvin. So, obviously, heat will flow from reservoir to water. Now, during this process uh, we have surroundings. So, we can calculate this a entropy change for the universe that is delta s universe will be nothing but delta s water plus delta s reservoir. So, to do that first thing we have to find out how much heat is getting transferred. So, heat transfer heat received by water we can calculate this q as m c p delta t. Uh, in these things your you know the delta t that is 353 minus 273 this means q becomes 4.187 is the c p uh, value m is unit mass delta t is 80 and this number is 335 kilojoule. Now, let us calculate what is delta S for the reservoir, because reservoir is at uniform temperatures. So, it is heat is losing. So, it is Q by T that is minus 335 divided by temperature is 353. So, this number is minus 0 0.95 kilojoule per Kelvin. Now, delta S water that can be calculated because it is receiving heat. So, it is d q by t and this can be calculated as m c p times integral of d t by t. Temperature goes from 273 to 353. So, we can find out it is m c p times l n t with limits from 273 to 353. So, by inserting this number we say delta s w would be 1 into 4.187 l n 353 divided by 273. So, this number is 1.08 kilojoule per Kelvin. So, entropy change of the universe which is always increasing would be 1.08 minus 0 0.95. So, this is 0 0.13 kilojoule per Kelvin. So, this is the answer that was being asked calculate the entropy change of the universe. The next problem is uh, we are talking about uh, uh, specific enthalpies of refrigerant and liquid and vapor state is measured. So, data is given that for refrigerant R 12 at 12 degree centigrade or we can say it is 273 plus 12, 285 Kelvin. 
So, temperature is 285 Kelvin. The refrigerant is change uh, has two values of enthalpy that means uh, HF liquid phase is 60 kilojoule per kg and Hg would be 254 kilojoule per kg and we require to find out entropy change that is Sg minus Sf. Now, to find this we have to recall uh, the uh, equations that were derived from the uh, thermodynamic property relations. One such equation is the TDS equation which says TDS is equal to dH minus V dP. Now, in a phase change process, so it is a phase change. So, dp can be considered as 0, there is no change in the pressure or we can say um, it is a constant temperature process. So, this will give you that ds is equal to dh divided by t. Now, if they can be interpreted in a finite numbers, we can write sg minus sf would be hg minus hf divided by T. So, here we can insert the value Sg minus Sf would be 254 minus 60 divided by 285. So, this number is 0 0.68 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, this is how uh, in fact, this is how the refrigerant data tables were prepared. Uh, the next problem is about a gearbox. What it says is that in a steady state operations, a gearbox receives 55 kilowatt energy through an input shaft and delivers the power through the an output shaft. Heat energy is carried out of this gearbox through the convection. Outer surface area is for the gearbox is given as 1 meter square and it has a temperature of 27 degree centigrade while surrounding air is 22 degree centigrade. So, we have to evaluate the heat transfer from the gearbox. So, we can draw a schematic diagram for this gearbox that we have two shafts that connects the gear box system. One is input shaft that receives the energy second one is output shaft that delivers this energy. So, basically, so energy that is being received that is W 1 dot is 55 kilowatt and we require to find out what is W 2 dot and uh, through this process what it says that, that it has surface area as 1 meter square and boundary temperature T b is uh, 27 degree centigrade while the surrounding uh, temperature is 22 degree centigrade. So, it is 295 Kelvin and this is 300 Kelvin. So, this is the problem and uh, we have need to find out the first heat transfer from this gearbox. Since there is a temperature difference, so obviously there will be heat transfer that will Q will be coming out. So, we can find out the solution the first thing that this Q will be through convection. So, Q can be found out at minus H A um, T B minus T O surroundings. So, here H is given that is minus 0 0.171 into area 1 meter square into 300 minus 295. So, this number is minus 0 0.855 kilowatt. Now, we need to find out what is the power 
delivered through output shaft. So, for uh, uh, to do that we need to find out at steady state how I can write the uh, energy balance equations. So, we can say W dot is equal to Q dot and W dot is nothing but W dot 1 plus W dot 2 is equal to Q dot. So, we require to find out W 2 dot that is Q dot minus W 1 dot. So, Q is minus 0 0.855 minus W would be minus of minus 55. So, this number is 54.15 kilowatt and you see that this, this is always a positive quantity. Okay. The next part is you need to calculate the entropy productions. So, for this entropy production if I write the uh, expression for uh, rate of entropy production. then we can recall for a core closed system energy balance d s by d t is nothing but q dot t plus sigma dot and it is a steady state. So, this number is 0 then we can calculate sigma dot is minus q dot by t. So, here we are uh, we, so minus here minus we can put and here we can there are two temperatures one is surrounding temperatures other is the boundary temperatures. Uh, two ways to look at since the boundary temperature of the gearbox is 27 degree centigrade. So, this T is nothing but your T B and Q dot is already known that is minus of minus 0.855 divided by T B is 300. So, by putting this number we say it is 0 0.00285 kilowatt per Kelvin. Now, once we know this entropy productions the uh, we can easily find out the term exergy destruction. this exergy destruction rate we can say it is E dot is equal to sigma dot into T 0. Now, here T 0 is nothing but your uh, surrounding temperatures. So, sigma dot we know 0 0.0025285 and uh, this is 273 plus 20. So, by putting this number we can approximate get is 0 0.84 kilowatt. So, this is the exergy destruction for the gearbox. Next problem is uh, about a mixing process. See we have a water at 85 degree centigrade in a, is flowing in a pipe. So, we say water and it is stream 1 and it is mixing with another stream of water okay. and the conditions is given that they are being mixed and taken out as another stream. So, this is a mixing arrangement and this mixing process is considered as adiabatic. Now, what conditions we know that for stream 1 we have uh, m 1 dot is 1.5 kg per second and m 2 dot is 0 0.8 kg per second T 
85 degree centigrade. So, that is 358 Kelvin, T 2 is 25 degree centigrade that is 298 Kelvin and this we have this stream 3 that is its temperature is not known. We also uh, can find out what is the common uh, total mass that is m 1 dot plus m 2 dot. So, this, this is the problem. So, we say it is a mixing is adiabatic that is the first thing. Uh, we are uh, going to find out what is the entropy generation and uh, exergy loss. To one thing that you need to find out first thing what is this uniform temperature or final um, equilibrium temperatures. So, we can say that we can say uh, the energy balance equation for this mixing system can be done by considering these equations as m 1 dot C p T 1 plus m 2 dot C p T 2 that is equal to m dot C p T. So, C p gets cancelled from both sides. So, this will give you the final temperature T as m 1 dot T 1 plus m 2 dot T 2 divided by m 1 dot plus m 2 dot. Now, talking about this, so uh, now we have these numbers. So, we can find out temperature is m 1 dot that is 1.5 into T 1 is 358 plus m 2 is 0 0.8 into T 2 is 298 divided by m 1 plus m 2 is 1.5 plus 0 0.8. Then by uh, simplifying this what we can get get is T is as 337 Kelvin. So, here this entropy generation has two parts one is delta S uh, water that is nothing but integral of d q by t. So, this can be split into two parts one part of water that goes from one temperature that is 358 to 337 other part of the water that goes m c p times d t by t uh, from 298 to 350, 337. So, by simplifying then we can say uh, um, this 1.5 into 4.187. So, this is the first part uh, into ln uh, 337 divided by 358. So, this is the first term plus second term is 0 0.8 into 14.187 ln 337 divided by 298. So, this will give you delta S water as 0 0.3032 kilowatt per Kelvin. Now, delta S surroundings or is equal to 0 because the mixing process is adiabatic there is no net net transfers 
from this mixing process being an adiabatics. So, total entropy generations delta S we can say universe would be uh, um, 0 0.032 kilowatt per Kelvin. Now, once I know this entropy uh, generations, then we can find out rate of exergy loss. That is E dot is equal to T 0 times sigma. So, sigma is nothing but in your case, in our case is delta S universe sigma dot and T 0 is given as 300 Kelvin. So, 300 into 0 0.032. So, this means E dot is about is equal to 9.6 kilowatt. Okay. So, this is all about this problem mainly uh, entropy and uh, exergy expressions. So, with this I conclude uh, in the next lecture I will be try to cover the second part of this tutorial session which involves on the combustions. Thank you for your attention.